You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. It is David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy with the Gratitude Guy podcast. I am your host. And as I tell people every week, actually, I'm back from a month off in May, and I'm starting now for every single Friday. And actually, it's going to be posted on Tuesday, I should say, every Tuesday at 5 a.m. I'm now doing my weekly podcast as opposed to twice a month. But my mission here is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their life that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. And what you can expect if you're a first-time listener is a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power a gratitude tip of the show or a gratitude nugget, uh, how you can become a gratitude believer, and maybe one to three takeaways from today's uh, show and more. Uh, As I mentioned, the podcast is downloaded every Tuesday at 5 a.m. out out on the Transformation Talk Radio Network, and uh, you can get it wherever you get podcasts. You can sign up Spotify, Apple, Google, and so on and so forth. Also, I might mention I do gratitude keynote speaking and gratitude coaching. You can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com and by email at david at thatgratitudeguy.com as well. And all those links and social media links and so forth are in the show notes. So let me get to move right on and introduce my guest. Scott Burns is a very good friend of mine, very talented young man. I took a couple of notes from um, some Facebook and LinkedIn things where it says he's a prolific sound and visual storyteller, a producer of over 20,000 radio and internet commercials in the career span of a lot of years, the proud creator and voice actor, a voice actor and on-camera demo needs and re- reels, I should say. He's done several fantastic video reels for me. Uh, provided the first English-speaking voice for Bowser and Super Mario games. And as they people have noted many times, a very persuasive personality for commercials, narration, and tutoring. So with that, let me just welcome Mr. Scott Burns. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Who wrote that? I wrote that. That's a combination of that guy. That's a combination of, of, of several people on that too. So what I always like to do, Scott, I always like to start out kind of with the context. So people know that are listening and the gratitude believers and so forth is how you and I met. I always like to let people know because it's so fascinating how our lives path or life paths are rather uh, cross and crisscross in life and so forth. So tell the listeners how you and I met. Well, it's, it was very fortuitous. You know, I think we, we met speaking of paths. I was at a crossroads of my career. I had been working for a radio station and, and found myself unemployed at that radio station and, and had uh, been seeking, what else can I do? What, what else is there? And somebody had suggested, well, you should maybe try public speaking. And I thought, well, that would be kind of a, that would be a, a fun method thing to do. So I had become an associate member of uh, the National Speakers Association Northwest Bureau. Okay, so that's uh, and and I did I wasn't I had no speech in me. I didn't know what to do, but I wanted to learn more about it uh, and to uh, us, you know to take care of my my dues. They allowed me to uh, do a little bartership, if that's a word, to uh, run their audio equipment for whenever they had speakers come in at the whatever hotel it was in Bellevue. Uh, and 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 uh, I ran the audio gear. I would set up the microphones and things like that. And I got to see all these great speakers come through and 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 kind of pick up some tidbits that way while getting a little bit it was it was an exchange. Uh, and then all of it one one day, one of these events, here's I think we were everybody was offered the chance that it was like an open mic night or something, open mic afternoon where people got to get up and and uh, do their thing. And here's this guy who I thought was a complete ringer. I thought this man has been speaking forever. He's eloquent. He was talking about the the dragon speech uh, application thing. And I'm just saying, is he a salesman for that? I thought, who is this man? <laughs> the man's name was David Brook, if I if I remember right. And, and anyway, so somewhere along the, the way, we we met at a table or something, or I introduced myself to you or you to me, and and it was just like, boom, I like this human being. Yeah. Uh, and, and then it's just, you. uh, you and I, uh, commenced to let's have coffee. And then we started a, a accountability group 
just mm-hmm. the two of us. It was the largest right. accountability group I'd ever had before. Uh, and it's just been, how many years has that been? Um, yeah, oh gosh, that's, that is, that has been a number of years. And as I said, in, in just the context is I just am fascinated by people that just, oh, by the way, I need to introduce you to my friend. And I tell people that it's just, you never know who you're going to meet tomorrow. And <clears throat> excuse me. And one of the things on this uh, RV trip I took with Connor, I recently took, <laughs> excuse me, is that I noticed that we had planned this 15 years ago when he was 12. Now he's 27. Wow. We finally did it. And one of the, the big messages I took, I just recently took this RV trip from Orlando to Boston in an RV with uh, my younger son is this concept about don't put things on, do it now and plan on it. And so you never know what each new day is going to bring. And one of the most important things and gratitude pays, plays a big part of this because I talk about how writing in your gratitude journal every day is so powerful. I don't miss a day writing in mine, but it makes you really present. That's one of the things that a gratitude journal does. It's one of the things that meditation does, but also you never know who you're going to meet that day. And when your head hits the pillow at night, you think, wow, on that day, I met this guy, Scott Burns. He's a cool guy. I wonder how this happened to the way our paths cross and why you connect with some people and not with others and things too. So, so back from that point, what did you, you mentioned kind of the career change. What did you kind of pivot to around the time you and I met? What did you pivot to kind of as the new direction for Scott? Well, my first love has always been uh, the term is production, radio production, audio sound design. I mean, that's, that's what got me interested in, in radio in the first place was being able to produce funny little bits and commercials and, and silly things like that and, and do funny character voices, which propelled me to want to be a, a radio host, a morning show guy. Mm. Uh, and so whenever, and, and it's always stayed with me and doing voices and things like that. So whenever I've, I've lost the radio jobs or, you know, that's a transient uh, industry anyway. Um, I've always fallen back on, on, you know, doing production. The, the problem was I'd, I'd reached an, an age of my life and, and a career point where those radio jobs were kind of waning. They weren't there anymore. And it was kind of a, this, it's like, what am I going to do that's different now? I didn't want to go back and do the same thing I'd, I'd been, you know, spending all my time working on. Uh, and so I was at a, uh, I don't know what to do kind of thing. Fortunately for me, I, things tend to find me. And I don't know if that's just leaving yourself open to the universe or whatever, but, but I'm not very good at being proactive on things, but I do leave the door open for things to find me. And, and I did a search. I, I searched around the country for other radio jobs, just thinking, well, I've got to do something to put food on the table. Um, and in the meantime, did, you know, I, just basic things like I helped a friend with his landscaping business. I, I, I applied to be a shuttle express driver, which was hard. Mm. all these humbling jobs, you know, blue collar jobs that I wasn't really accustomed to having done, but I needed money. So uh, I'm trying to get back to where, what your question was of well, what was, what was my outlook along the way? I had done some pickup work for a local advertising agency. They had an in-house production and video department. And uh, had just done some, you know, gone in after hours to help the guy organize commercials. Never thought I'd want to do that job because it was just, it was basically a cookie cutter, put things together kind of things. But then uh, after going through all these other uh, soul searching jobs, what, what do I want to do? I get this call and saying that that guy had left the building and are you interested? And so I just happened to be, you know, here it is, it was like four miles from my home and uh, started working there. But now I I was able to take on all the the bigger, more fun, hot, sexy jobs (laughs) that the guy was doing that he didn't want to do. Uh, And that that lasted uh, for 13 and a half years, you know, so it was the longest job I'd had ever, you know, and and uh, and it fulfilled my production, you know, creative needs and and, uh, enabled me to meet a lot of uh, new people and and just do what I love doing, which was production. So that's, again, I, I've just, by leaving the door open, things kind of, I just allow well, it. Well, and it's interesting, Scott, you said things seem to find me. And I think I've never been a, a real proponent of the word luck, but I do believe there's a definition that says luck is preparation meeting opportunity. And so if the opportunity was there, things seem to find me, you obviously were prepared to accept that luck or that opportunity, whatever it might be. And I think that's really important because 
having that door open or looking at different things, or you said something else that's very important to me, especially when I think about being grateful about things, is the humbling experiences. I know as I went through developing that gratitude guy, I drove Uber for a while. I delivered Postmates food and different things. I worked in a little retail shop after I'd been the store manager of a giant Nordstrom and a giant Lowe's and type of thing. So I think that humbling thing is extremely important for keeping us uh, kind of our, our mindset in check. Would you agree? I totally agree. It, it grounds you. And mm -hmm. for me, it literally grounded me because I was crawling under rhododendron bushes of a very rich person's home up in, in the, the hills or wherever, you know, it, it was the woman who started Hotmail, as a matter of fact. And they oh, wow. This beautiful estate with these Tudor. I mean, it was like I, I, you would never I could never get past the gates to go into this place. But since I was part of the, the landscaping crew, I got to go in it. But even that, though, I mean, it was like this is kind of it was kind of nice for a while to, to work with my hands. I, I grew up on a farm, so I wasn't, uh, you know, unaccustomed to getting hands dirty. Uh, but this, it was humbling in that it's like, wow, how far do I have to go? I'm crawling on the ground, scooping rhododendron uh, debris from under a bush. Mm -hmm. when, when, when I'm doing everything you ask God. So when does it open up for me? You know, <laughs> and, and it was, uh, but you know, and that was cash under the table. So, it, but it was, it was groceries on the table. So, yeah, um, yeah. but it's, uh, again, I'm, 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 I'm lost your, my train of thought here, basically how humble do you have to, to get, but yeah, right. it, it does kind of, it makes you appreciate what you do have and, and really kind of helps you focus more on, on what it is. What is it I really want to do? What is, what is, and me? I think, and I think it's important too, because you and I know each other well enough to look at the experiences we had, the ones we just mentioned, as well as others where you really get humbled. And I think oftentimes when you peel back the onion on a lot of these celebrities and these famous people, a lot of them have really had that same experience. Well, I used to work at 7-Eleven or I was doing hot dogs at uh, the hot dog stand at the local uh, stadium or whatever it might be. And I really think it's important because to me, the antithesis of that is always the child stars that never know any humbling things at all. And so they're a famous star from five years old or six. And it turns out half the time, maybe higher, their lives are a mess because they never went through any of those experiences or being a kid or being humbled or gosh, to me, it, it's like the, even during the Uber son, can you get my bag? Go, you don't understand. I'm a very famous speaker. I'm actually a person. You know, but yeah. Let me get that bag for you. Let me open that door. It's just, it's, I, I laugh at it. Cause it's so, I think it's so good for you. Well, it, it is. And, and, and it helps put your if things in, in perspective right away when I was driving for uh, well, I actually knew, I drove one day for uh, the shuttle express, a flying company, uh, but I learned a lot about how, what is it like to, to receive a tip from someone? Oh, yeah. And, and even in that case, since I was a trainee, I, I couldn't keep the tip. I had to give it to the trainer. But, but the fact of, of, of that, I, I got out of the van, went to the back of the van, got their bags, and, and, and then was handed a $2 tip. And I'm just mm -hmm. going, wow. And my, <laughs> my instructor was saying, now, don't spend those tips all at once. <laughs> like, a, lot of, a lot of fellows just blow it on lunches. But I like to save my tips for when I go to a movie. You know, or, it's like, okay. Well, and I, and I think an experience like that, don't spend it all in one place. I love that. How, how is it kind of, you look at the iterations of Scott Burns, how has your gratitude piece, my favorite word, gratitude turns what you have into enough and gratitude helps you to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. How has your view of your appreciation or thankfulness or gratitude, if you will, kind of changed as you've uh, gotten older over the years? It's, it's helped me, hmm, boy, that's, that's a lot to unpack there. Cause I'm, trying, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, uh, at the time when I was, when I had, a, I had a really nice career going, you know, from high school. And I always, I always look at this five years of my life from high school to, to Seattle. I worked, I started in, in the humble beginnings of Moscow, Idaho, my hometown, uh, went to Great Falls, Spokane to Boston, and then to Seattle in five years. That's, that's a big, that's, that's a, big a lot for, for anything. And, and, and at the time I, I took it for granted because, and I, and even then I was kind of like, Oh, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big thing. Don't think of, you know, this is what I do. I don't have a big head. I was trying to, maybe it was the, the, uh, the upbringing on the, on the farm, but I, I tried to keep things in perspective and I'm glad I didn't, I'm grateful. I didn't let it go to my head, but at the time it was just like, this is just, this is what I do. This is where my life is right now. In retrospect, I look back on that and go, wow, that was really something. And I do appreciate that. And I'm grateful for that. 
and and it's helped me understand that that through life there are there are chapters. I'm I'm in one right now, and 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 you can't take it for granted at the time because, and and to you know to to look around and go, wow, this is this is a great special moment when you have kids. Uh, you take for granted when they're little, they're toddlers, and they're growing up, and you're going through the school and 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 you know all the expenses of that. But then all of a sudden, that's that's just dissipated, and they're grown adults now. And it's like, wow, exactly. That just seems like uh, a couple of months ago, I w- we were going on field trips and things like that with the school. So I appreciate that. Uh, so I I tr- I'm, I think it's helped me to to understand where I'm at now. Uh, this, this recent, uh, transition I'm in right now, as a matter of fact, uh, which happened just a couple of weeks ago where the, the full-time position, uh, ended, I was, it's, it's one of those cases where be careful what you wish for, because I've been wanting to, to be on my own again and, 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 uh, work remotely and well, look, and now I'm working remotely <laughs> and, but it's, it's great. I've got all these other opportunities and things are uh, the, again, like I say, I'm leaving the door opening and, and things are, are going to happen and not, and not get wigged out worrying about right. what's, Oh, what do we do this? Cause when you focus on the worry, that's, that becomes your thing. And you know, that's, it's hard to break through of that. So I'm trying to, you know, keep, keep looking towards the positive and well and, and even with that new chapter because you had left me a voicemail or a text or something to mention the change and and you would you and i talked about that might happen at some point whether it's your decision or their decision but but here's one of the things that i extract from it from a, such a positive standpoint and again being grateful is look at as you just said the opportunities there's a lot of other things you're going to be looking at and it kind of now forced your hand and it's making it's going to make you look at these other things but also with the kids being grown think how differently you would have reacted if this was 20 or 30 years ago versus now and i would imagine you're a lot more grateful something like that happened now than back then yes yeah and you know yeah and we did and i credit my wife for keeping things normal and no one would ever know that we'd been, you know, if we were in between successes, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, in between jobs uh, for keeping everything just as status quo and, and, you know, not, you know, blowing out, Oh, what are we going to do kind of stuff? But yeah, the, when, when you you do have that family, the, the immediate dependence, depending on you, it's like, I've got to do something. And, and that can kind of wear you down too. It's been kind of nice too, when uh, in terms of, I, I am in searching for work or, or whatever. So I don't have that. I need this. I've got to get this. And, and uh, just kind of like, well, here you're more or less offering yourself as a service to people. And, and mm-hmm. if they need that service, then so be it. That'll, that'll come. But um, you know, if not, then let's, let's move on. And, and well, and I have a, I have a feeling again with, with the gratitude uh, overview or overarching aspect of what I talk about on the podcast that there's got to be a number of things that since that happened, you're thinking, great, now I can do ABC that got put on the shelf because there was never enough time. Yes. And that that brings to mind of, oh, I need to prioritize things or, you know, because before I, I always had the, the full time thing that not as an excuse, but it, it was occupying my full, my days. Right. And I wished that I'd had time for myself to do these X, Y and Z. And now that I, I don't have that, it's like, oh, I now I, I don't have an excuse. So I need to, I need to tend to these things here, but it's, it's still nice not to have that underlying, that feeling that I've got to, I've got to produce, I've got to be on site so, so they can see me that I'm, you know, not, not that it's a fake, but it's like, I'm putting in uh, false calorie hour hours, you know, it's well, like, and, and it's, and it's interesting to me as well, because I, and I think back on this, this podcast, gratitude nuggets and, and maybe a thought of the day or, or a tidbit or something to take away. One of the things when it comes to prioritizing and being an entrepreneur as I am, and, and as you are, have been, and now even more full time, uh, I mentioned something the other day, I think this was just such a great nugget is that a couple times a day, I'll ask myself, is this the most important thing you should be working on? And if you ever want to get into where you prioritize things, ask yourself that question a few times a day, and that'll help you because sometimes I'm off in the weeds doing something that's just not very important or people will say, well, is this going to create money or revenue or build your business or pay the bills or whatever it might be? But it's, but that whole prioritizing thing is really important. Make a list, you know, and, and now Mm -hmm. I have a, a a series of lists and and scraps of paper here. (laughs) I'll go back through and go, well, I didn't get to that one. Didn't, well, I guess I could cross this off. It's amazing how, how like filling out your gratitude journal, you can just keep going and going and going. But uh, it, the more you do that, you know, put these little bullet points down. It's like, oh, I've, there's a lot to do. 
And that right. can kind of be overwhelming a little right. bit. But boy, the gratitude I, you get from when you can cross one of those uh, items off the list is just a, a mind lifter. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, wow, I, I, that's, you know, I, I get these things that have been, I need to do this, I need to do that. And then finally, when I do it, uh, it's like, whoo, this is, you know, I'm on top of the world. Oh, it's a great feeling. And that's what, that's what we're looking for, too, is sometimes is the gratitude nuggets or the gratitude feelings of, of got a great sense of self-satisfaction or accomplishment or whatever. And it's interesting, you said make a list. And I'm, I'm a big list person. I'm also a big note taker. And one of the things I always have my, my yellow pad that uh, you can't see it on there, but, and I make notes and then I digest them later. I take them. And so I'll be talking to somebody on zoom or on the phone or, or something where I can see them, I guess, on FaceTime or wherever it might be. And I'll be writing all this stuff down there saying, and I want to make notes of this. And I'm going to create that a list later. And then I look at them and go, don't you need to take notes? I mean, are you just like remembering everything? I mean, like, man, I wish I had your memory because I'll go back and here's the things seem to find me, as we said, in preparation opportunity, the chapters of your life has just changed, make a list, most important things and so forth. So, but when you do the list, you have like multiple lists or is it like one big master list or how do you handle that? It's a big doodle page. It's mostly just dots, dots, dots with, with, you know, circles. And then just, I, I draw circles on top of circles and squares on top of squares. It's, it's a, it's, I, it's my doodle page, but, mm -hmm. but it's, I can, I can look back at it and go, oh yeah, I know what I was talking about when I was drawing that little square. Uh, yeah. I, I want to credit you too, because you're, you mentally take notes so well. When we first met, I, I was astounded that you remembered names of my family and names of, of people that I, that we talked about before. I mean, it was just like, uh, not, not scary, but it was impressive. Oh, that, thank you. And, and made me want to become, I need to be a better listener. <laughs> and, well, and it's amazing too. I, I've got some upcoming talks and workshops I'm going to be doing. And one of the modules, even though it's about gratitude and how to become more grateful and a gratitude journal and, you know, folks and the things you have versus what you don't have, those are all the gratitude pieces I've done, but I add things and I add different modules. And one of them that's one of the most popular is how to be a good listener. And, and everybody's like, somebody once said, it was so funny. They said, everybody thinks they're a better driver and a better listener than they really are. Yeah, I thought that was kind of funny because it's true. It's like, everybody thinks that, but then I want to sometimes kind of be a knucklehead about it. And I go, well, if you're such a great listener, hold on a second, let me ask you something. Where did I go with Connor? For how far was the trip? What kind of vehicle did we have? What cities we, I mean, you know, and, and people, because they're so busy trying to get ready to make their next comment. In fact, again, a gratitude nugget. It was Stephen Covey in the seven habits, I believe that said, listen to understand, don't listen to respond. Ooh. And it's, it's so true. And, and, and just really let it sink in. And, and as, as fast as I talk, I understand I've always talked fast and so forth. I try to really stop sometimes and just really absorb and hear what the person says and then formulate your next question rather than that thing you see all the time when you're talking. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay, what I wanted to tell you is you go, you didn't hear a word I said. So it pays off. And what's interesting too is that because it's more rare than we would like, people comment, you're such a good listener. You really, because it's not the most common thing. People love to hear about themselves. Yeah. You know, have it regurgitated <laughs> back. And, and, you know, the, it's been dawning on me here too how listening, uh, studying improv or, or taking an improv class, if anybody can get a chance to do that, I know it's. Oh, yeah guts it takes time it takes whatever and, and it's kind of hard now with covid to do improv via zoom even though there are people doing it uh but i was fortunate enough years and years and years ago to to uh, start working with gary austin who's passed away now but he was the found, founder of the groundlings in los angeles which has become the saturday night live you know uh right farming farming community but um for years uh, he would come up and, and it would just be games and and it's just fascinating to how through play we can create you know create content but one of the uh it, it took me a long time and, and he was always accusing me he goes oh, you're trying to be funny you're uh, stop doing that radio thing you know you're, oh you know interesting and and it was because yeah i was trying to think ahead of what you know i thought i've got to say something funny. i've got to be brilliant here and i wasn't listening to what was happening until finally up until the very end i was when i realized you know what i'm just going to go and react because mm -hmm. we improv every day when, when you're at the store, when you're, you're meeting just anybody, you're, you're not trying to think, well, some people might think ahead of what they're trying to say, but, but when I quit trying to think ahead and just react to what was happening to me, things just opened up and wow. you, would get, you would get laughs. And I don't know why, why what I did was 
uh, created that reaction in that person, but mm -hmm. they laughed. Okay. And it, it became so liberating and fun. And it was just like, okay, all I have to do is listen and, yeah. and just react. And that's, yeah. that's what it was. So that's, that's a, you know, you don't even need to take an improv class. I think to do that, you just have to, to sh just listen. And, no, and that's, that's so true. And, and it's just amazing what you can, what you can uh, understand or find out. Larry King, I think before he retired, said one of his biggest comments was you can't learn anything when you're talking. And it's really too. And another, uh, again, I'm just such a big fan of tidbits and nuggets and little reminders and, and things to remember. I tell those people all the time, the two most important three word phrases you can use when you're listening to somebody are tell me more is number one. And then number two is, and then what? And if you let somebody talk and then they say, well, well, April and I went here and we did this, we did that and we traveled here. And well, tell me more. Well, then we took a shuttle bus and we went here and went to the mountain and went to see the sightseeing. Well, tell me more. Well, then we went surfing. When you're done, you'll think I'm the greatest friend you've ever had. Because most people, well, I've taken a shuttle bus before. We went on an RV trip before. We were over there and I go, wait a minute, we're not talking about you. You asked about me. So it's amazing how many more friends, if you want to, Dale Carnegie, win friends and influence people, just learn to listen too. So, so well, let me go, we'll get a wrap up. And I want, I was just thinking about some of the things you said. I always like to come up with a few takeaways from any podcast. I like that things seem to find me kind of the luck preparation opportunity. If things find you, you got to be ready when they do find you. So that's the preparation piece. When the opportunity comes along, you got a new chapter of your life going on, which is going to be great to see how you apply gratefulness and gratitude to the new chapter post destination or whatever it might be and so forth. Make a list. I think that's fantastic. I mentioned the thing about, is this the most important thing that I should be working on? And the last thing I just want to ask you to make one more comment on this, take an improv class. What's the biggest benefit? You might've answered it, but just for the listeners, what's the biggest benefit of that improv class? Wow. That's a, and that's a tough question to answer because I don't know. I mean, mm. <laughs> for, for voiceover, if, if I've always, everybody says, well, take an acting class, but I always say, suggest take an improv class because it helps you be in the moment, helps you think on your feet. Uh, and you know, you're, you can be spontaneous because a lot of times if you're in a booth and they're taking direction from somebody and they say, Hey, how about doing that as Superman? Right. You're just like, okay, I, I don't know what Superman sounds like. It, it doesn't matter. Just, just go for it. Um, but it, it, it just, it helps keeps you grounded and, and a sense of awareness. And it's a lot of fun. If you get a chance, you, you meet new people. Uh, everybody's in this, of course, you're going to think, well, everybody here is better than I am. They're thinking the exact same thing. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it's a communal experience and it's, it's just, it's, it's games. You're playing games, but games with that create structure. It's, it's like, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's, I guess, yeah, it, it brings us back to being uh, when we were kids again, you know, yeah. and, and didn't have to, to deal with all kinds of stuff. We just got to play. Well, it's interesting. You said, um, I don't know how to answer a lot of things. And then you answered it. Uh, and I put down here, uh, taking an improv class, uh, being in the moment, think on your feet, being spontaneous, being grounded and a sense of awareness. So those are four or five aspects that are really good. So, like so what we, your fear is jumping out of an airplane. Uh, yeah, with, with uh, exactly. Very, you know, very just, similar. Just basically, very, if you can do that, then oh, I can, that wasn't, there's a know. lot of things you can do. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So, well, that's it for this episode, everybody. And as a reminder, my podcast is downloaded, as I mentioned earlier, every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. And is available wherever you get your podcasts. It might be Apple or Spotify or Google or what have you. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. And I do appreciate that. Uh, I do gratitude keynote speaking and coaching. And you can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com. And also email david at thatgratitudeguy.com. And to connect with me or to connect with Scott, I will put the information in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to receive my Monday morning minute video I send out every morning, text or every Monday morning, rather uh, text gratitude guy to two, two, eight, two, eight. So you punch in two, two, eight, two, eight for the number. And then the space for the message type in gratitude guy, all one word that'll get you connected on that. My guest on June 13th will be Ann Bremner, the prominent Seattle attorney, and she will share some great stories of how gratitude inspired and encouraged her along the way. And also to purchase That Gratitude Guy's daily gratitude journal, just go to thatgratitudeguy.com. So lastly, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Scott, by thank the way. You, David. Thank you. And I will see you all next time. And remember, my favorite saying is be grateful and never quit. So long. 
Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.